Hello and welcome to another modern video. And today I bring to you, honestly, sort of a revelation, okay? This is, uh, an article came out and somebody was just saying, you know, there, there's, I think that people are building Amulet wrong and there's a better way to build Amulet out there. And at first I was like, ah, you know, whatever, like that's, that's kind of BS. And then the more I looked into it and I actually played a league off, uh, you know, off stream or without recording it, and I was very impressed by how this deck played out. So what, we, what I have for you is better amulet. Uh, this deck list goes back to the origins of amulet and it takes that into 2022. So instead of messing around with Dryad and trying to make your, you know, try to have that extra angle of attack, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to maximize on the toolbox aspect, the fine model, which was always uh, probably the strongest aspect that they had access to, right? Like the flexibility that it, it has in terms of switching uh, switching gears and like having different plans in different matchups. And so they were taking that to the extreme. So uh, we're trying, um, of course, Primeval Titan, we're playing four copies of Azusa, four copies of Explore, one Arboreal Gracer, one Sakura Tribe, uh, three Sakura Tribe cards. This split is obviously, I probably don't have too much to explain here if we're not playing Dread, obviously, as Susa is the best ram spell we have access to, and then Explore is uh, it's just like the best curve filler, uh, the best role player that we have on, on this slot, and it just does exactly what we want it to every single time, right? Just ramp without costing you a card. And then we have access to our Warrior Racer and three copies of Stacy. And the reason for playing Stacy is that we're trying to maximize and try to be as as combo oriented and maximize on the high roll potential the deck has access to. So we're going to be trying to uh, play a Burial Gracer, we're trying to play Stacy and uh, a Burial Gracer just because we, we can pack four, right, as, as a tutor target, but we are actually trying to draw Stacy the majority of the time. We also are playing Saga, obviously, so we have amulets and an expedition map, and we're going back to Ancient Steerings, which is basically one mana demonic tutor, for as far as this deck goes, and then Abandoned Harvest, which is uh, like sort of the next best thing that we have access to. The 3 2 split, I assume that it has to do with some testing purposes, but that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We also have access to obviously the one of Cultivator Colossus, and because we don't have uh, access to Dryad, we need to be able to destroy opposing uh, problematic permanents, so we have access to the one engineered explosive that we can tutor for with uh, Tolera West. In the mana base, we also have access to uh, Boseju and Odawara. Odawara, obviously, as a way to uh, answer problematic permanence. And Kabira Crossroads fixes our mana uh, for, for our sideboard cards. A couple of basic lands. Cavernous Souls, obviously fantastic right now in the metagame. Breeding Pool, um, and to go with alongside uh, Temple Garden and our fetch line in order to give us the color mana that we need. And then uh, Bojuke Bog. Uh, of course, we're playing Ursa Saga because this card is busted. And then a couple of copies of the Little West, which opens up our toolbox, right? Like this is what allows us to, to go with Cultivated Colossus and all the other stuff, right? Uh, in the sideboard, we have access to Prismatic Ending and Rest in Peace and Path to Exile as our white cards. Uh, this is uh, because of Murktide specifically, of course. Prismatic Ending because it's just a, a fantastic flexible removal spell. A couple of copies of Rest in Peace, Best Graveyard Hate in the format. And obviously, Rest in Peace is very, very good right now. Again, Against a bunch of the different uh, top decks in the format, particularly Living End and Murktide as well. Thrag Daddy as a two-door target. Again, we're trying to maximize on Summoner's Pact uh, from the deck building standpoint, right? So we have access to Thrag Daddy against Burn and Grindy matchups, uh, Endurance as well, Foundation Breaker against Artifact, Enchantments, and whatnot. Uh, we also have access to the one of Cigar the Heron's Grace. This one is a very interesting one. Fantastic card for grinding. Five mana, four, five flying. And you and humans you control have hexproof. And then for two mana, you exile a card from your graveyard and you create a one, one human soul, your creature. So this allows you to go wide and present a, a very impactful clock in matchups that require you to do so while protecting you from Discord spell, burn spells, Liliana Edicts, stuff like that. Chalice of the Void is uh, obviously an answer to um, Cascade that we can tutor for. Very, very powerful. An extra copy of Engineered Explosives. A Peeling Needle as an extra tutor target for Ursa Saga. Blast Zone as a, sort of a, an explosives that we don't need to cast, that we can blow up shadows and monkeys with without really needing to, uh, to put a spell in the stack, which is very powerful, of course. Um, I forgot to talk about Force of Vigor, obviously, one of the best green cyber cards that the format offers. And finally, one copy of Ember Cool Depronis, and this one is obviously for the control matchups, for color, and uh, things like that. So, 
Uh, I'm very excited to give this uh, to give this uh, list uh, some some time in the sun because I think that this is the future of Amulet and I think that people have been uh, ignoring the past for way too long and all the lessons that we've learned have been sort of forgotten when when the new toys came around. You know, uh, look at how clean this mana base looks uh, when you cut the the Valkuts, right? Like it's it's just such a it's just so much cleaner. Like it, it, I look at this and it's just just a beautiful sight. So. Very excited to, to give this, this uh, deck list some time in the sun. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into it, shall we? All right, starting things off with an interesting hand. Huh. Hmm. I think this hand may be just... If this were a prime time, I would snap this off. But as is, I think this hand is a little bit too clunky. If I had a guaranteed untapped land, I think I would I could consider keeping this. But as is, I'm going to ship it. Uh, this hand is... <laughs> this Cultivated Colossus doesn't want to go anywhere, huh? Um, no green mana, so we probably have to chip it, unfortunately. Uh, this hand is... We're starting to look a lot better now, so I can bottom this and T-West. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So we're going to keep this, bottom uh, these two, and say okay. Born in turn one, bo Botanical Sanctum. That's probably bad news for us. So we're going to go turn one Saga, say go. We could have gone turn one Vesuva, copy your Sanctum. And that, that allows me to go turn two Stacy, and then... Oh, this is leaving end. Okay, this is actually not the worst. So I'm just going to go turn two Vesuva, copy my own Saga, and take it from there. Yeah, this looks good. Point in place another land. Uh, well, that's certainly a thing. So copy and pass a turn. And next turn, we're going to get to do get some fireworks cracking. We're not going to be able to cast Titan next turn, but we are going to have draws towards doing that. We're going to see how things go. One in Cycling Waker there. Uh, they send away the land, which is kind of sucks a little bit. Having access to four Asusa is just so good here. Like It's, it's just such a fantastic thing. But my opponent is just going to play Shadowless Agent here. Well, that's so good for me. Yes, please. <laughs> please play a Shardless Agent. I mean, they fetched already, so they don't have Outburst mana. So I don't I don't need to worry about that, even if my opponent just doesn't do, end up, ends up not doing anything. But okay. So they're just passing the turn straight up. Another Saga is kind of not the worst, actually. So get my Amulet into play. Play my land. We're going to play my friend... Asusa. She's lost, but she's seeking. You know, she's trying. And I guess I'm not gonna be able to play... Huh. Do I want to play Saga? Or do I want to play... Do I want to play Saga or do I want to play Growth Chamber and try to spike? Because what I can do here is I can go... I think I'm gonna go second land drop, Growth Chamber. Because now my opponent tapped out, they don't have access to the whale. So I'm just going to bounce here. We're going to go harvest for non-land. We find prime time. Okay, and now I'm just going to play the other saga and I'm just going to say go. So the plan was we either um, find another amulet and then we can cast the titan right now. Or I guess I was, I was going to be one minute short. Never mind. It wouldn't have worked regardless. Don't mind me. Just being silly. Grief. That's sad. <laughs> That's very sad. So there goes the grief. I'm gonna take my prime time. Oh, but if they take prime time, they pr prime time comes back. <laughs> That's very funny. So now if they leave in and they give me my prime time back. <laughs> All right, you wanna give me two prime times? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I mean, unless they have endurance in hand right now, which they could. They could have. Yeah, I don't think you thought this through clearly, opponent. <laughs> Living and resolves. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right. Um. So the world is our oyster here. So what do we want to do? Um, 
Can we kill them next turn? I'm pretty sure we can find a way to kill them. They don't have enough toughness. And I can swing for... I can swing... I guess they have this, so I can't swing for 20... For, that's going to be... Third, no. That's going to be... Um, these are 5-5. Five, five, it's going to be 7-7 seven, seven times 2. So they're going to be 14, 28. I can swing for 28. Um, so let's just go... Oh, I can just Odawara put the thing in hand. Like, that's... Yeah, let's just do that. So, Odawara, Toleria West. We just bounce the Waker Waves. Second primetime trigger. We're going to go Growth Chamber, Growth Chamber. Float some mana. And now we're going to float mana of Odawara. Bounce it. Float mana off of T-West. Bounce it. Uh, we're going to let these... Greaves resolve. Hey, I even get a token for my for my troubles. Saga token. Pass the turn. Opponent, you have now a 7-7 seven, seven in your hand. So how much blocking power does my opponent have? Whatever it is, it's not enough, right? Like we find second amulet. Um one, two, three, four, five, six. Play bounce land. Yeah. However much blocking power my opponent has is most definitely not enough. <clears throat> Transmute, summon respect, pact for primeval titan. Yeah, I I'm trying to, ch I'm just trying to, you know, justify playing, uh, <laughs> finding Cultivator Colossus instead, but let let's not be silly here. <laughs> let's not be silly here. This is one of those things where there's probably a meme that exists to <laughs> to represent what just happened here. Uh, it doesn't really matter where I put this extra uh, power, so I'm just going to do this. Um, and we're going to bounce, I think, the Boros Garrison. And I think Construct Token's feeling frisky. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, Construct Token. So Crossroads, Grill Turf. Everything's going out exactly according to plan. Mold to five. When you mold to five, all it takes is for your opponent to somehow give you <laughs> two free primeval titans, and then you win anyways. It's not even that big of a deal. <laughs> uh, Sun Home Fortress. Yeah, we definitely want to double strike the ones that obviously deal the most damage. So, all right. Opponent has seen the writing on the wall. All right, rest in peace. Ask me whether rest in peace is good in this matchup. Endurance, fantastic in the matchup. Chalice. Don't mind if I do. I think that's it. Obviously, I don't like engineered explosives. Pretty bad here. We have our own chalice, so maybe I should be cutting one of my summoner's pacts. I've changed my philosophy about this. In the past, against chalice decks, I used to um, cut uh, some number of summoner's packs. I don't think I, I, I should do that anymore. Uh, but when I am the one playing my own chalices, then... I'm a little bit more skeptical about keeping it, you know? Maybe I should still. Uh, I mean, I guess the Pact finds Endurance. So yeah, I think I, 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 I'm I gonna still keep the four packs. Um, I think I wanna... Steering finds Chalice, that's so hot. Um, Asusa is fantastic. So I think I'm just gonna shave two Explorers and one Harvest, keep the rest. Okay, so we can turn one Expedition map. We can Steerings. Expedition map gets me bogged, which is pretty sexy. I think that we can probably do better. Yeah, this is so much better. Keep this, and I think I'm going to bottom the Abundant Harvest. Because Pact allows me to find... What's his name? Allows me to pack for Asusa, so I can early prime time. Asusa is far and away my best draw. I guess my best, the best sequence would be turn one and tap land, turn two Asusa. That would be the best, the best possible uh, set of draws that I could have. Turn one Odawara after cycling Street Wraith. Okay. I hear you, opponent, loud and clear. That probably tells me that my opponent's not doing too hot in terms of amount, amount of lands in hand. Play Botanical Sanctum, so doing a little bit better. Maybe they found that off of the... Maybe they found that off of the, what's his name? Of the Cycler. We're gonna see a force here. And the reason to play the Amulet first is if my opponent is gonna force this, I know, I'm know i probably gonna play Growth Chamber instead of Sun Home. And if they don't force this, this I, I'm likely, yeah. So now I can 
kind of adapt to what my opponent's doing here. So I don't untap land, so I can pact for a Asusa if I want to. Best draw would probably be a natural Asusa. If I find natural Asusa, then I'm gonna be looking really good because I'm that allows me to summoners pact for endurance instead. Yeah, this is this is what I was saying earlier. Like because of my land sequence kind of tells me that my opponent uh, doesn't have enough lands, right? Like because if they go turn one this land, which they kind of don't want to play early in the game, that probably means that. So there are a couple of things that we can do here. I can play to Larry West. Next turn we play Bounce Land, we transmute for Chalice of the Void, we play Chalice. Alternatively I can go play Saga. Next turn make a construct play my T West. Uh, I don't think I like that though. Yeah I think I'm gonna play to Larry West. Yeah, because I'm I'm really incentivized because my other green source is a growth chamber, I'm really incentivized to play growth chamber anyway next turn. And out of that deal I'm not really getting much in terms of value, like I'm just getting one construct out of the deal, uh, versus this I'm getting a child of the void, which is obviously much better than the construct. Not cycling, so I'm expecting... Um, the good thing is that if my opponent tries to trick me, they are gonna be the ones tricked, which is nice. Their opponent's not having any of it. They're just like, slam it right now, you don't have anything, and they're right. <laughs> they're, they're very much right, I don't have anything. Um, so can I beat that? I don't think I can. Nope. Next game. <laughs> All right, game number three. Now we're gonna be on the play, which is exciting. Yeah, I don't think I want to change anything. This looks good to me. Maybe cultivator is bad, but I think that I need to have access to cultivator to. If my opponent resolves a living end, this is how I get to go really over the top. So as a, as a single ton two door target, I think that Colossus is is worth the one-off. Like, if I had a second copy, I would probably cut the second copy, but I think as a, as a two-door target is, is kind of valuable to have access to. Okay, game number three on the play. I think I keep this. So we can go turn one, Saga, turn two, Steerings. We have Pact, so we can go get Asusa, or we can go a Pact for Endurance, if that's something that we're interested in. Steerings can potentially find me a Chalice, can potentially find me... Um, another amulet which would allow me to go off on turn three so this hand has a ton of options all right turn one saga opponent move to three jeez that's rough yeah turn uh, no cycler there it's kind of beating for my opponent uh explore is an incredible draw so now i get to explore instead of steerings and develop my mana very nicely and now next turn i'm gonna be able to do all sorts of things all sorts of nice and exciting things. Hey, that's a card. Uh, do I want to make a token here? I kind of do. Yeah, I think so. Because otherwise I'm just playing steerings here. So, not particularly exciting. Um, so here I can go rest in peace. I wonder if my opponent is just going to force here. Oh my god, this is so good for me. Hell yeah. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> That, uh, that resolves. So I think I'm gonna bounce the west gives me more options. Here's a rest in peace. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> they two for one themselves, casting their, uh, using their combo piece, and now I just basically <laughs> play a card that they can't beat. Seems good to me. Seems good to me. Uh, let's lead on steering, see what we find. Are we looking for a bounce land here? Ding, 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 ding. We got a winner. Oh, by the way, that, that's probably one of the most weird things that I always see, is when people choose the order in which they put the cards back from Agent Steerings. That's such a waste of time. <laughs> you're, you're never, never, ever in a gazillion years getting all the way to the bottom of your deck. Like, the car, it, I mean, it's good to know which cards are in the bottom, right? Like, we have the Boros Garris in the bottom, like, whatever. We're gonna shuffle. Like, we're gonna shuffle before we get there. My opponent continues doing nothing, and we're just gonna make this silly 1-1 one -one right now. Hey, another amulet. Okay. Um, oh, I made it. I made a token. I, I didn't mean to make a token. Whatever, like, this is garbage now. Like, I, it doesn't matter what I do. <laughs> this is... Um, this is very, very much garbage time right now. 
Obviously, I should have played a Primeval Titan there and closed the game, but I don't know. There's something fun about beating beating my opponent down with Constructs. I'm also going to transmute for uh, for Chalice here. <laughs> uh, just having fun. Just having some fun. Chalice for zero. Do you want to waste your living end on two worthless Constructs? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. I guess I could have swung for five, right? Instead of four. Punt? Why are we still here, opponent? Why are we still here? You got some force into leaving in action. Is that what's up? Force number two into violent outburst. Still not good enough. <laughs> still very, very much not good enough. All right, so it looks like my one did have the force pitching Colossus Sky, Sky Turtle. And they kill the rest in peace and a construct, which is baffling, to say the least. Um, okay. Do they have another force? And that's why I play the, the Saga, by the way, to bait out another force. But I mean, they have two cards in hand. Oh, Subtlety. Pitching Subtlety. Yeah, that's it's not very good. <laughs> Let's put that one on the bottom, on the top, shall we? Swing for four. What do you think is going to happen next turn, opponent? There we go. We get the concession. All right. Better amulet. Wanna know? See you next round. All right, um, options, options, options. So I think we're gonna keep this hand and we're gonna use this cantrips to fix our to fix our situation. So I'm gonna go tr first steerings because I don't know whether I'm looking for a land or an or, or oh come on, it's, you're not even a real deck anymore, Mill. What are you doing? Uh, okay, so that's an amulet, which means that harvest is gonna be fine in a land. We also have Expedition Map, but well, we can never win. <laughs> we can literally never, ever win. Oh no, my board is Garrison. Surgical Mayasusa? <laughs> oh man, you love to see it. <laughs> That's not a good play, by the way. You should basically never, under no circumstance, ever, surgical Mayasusa. Find a bounce land, that's great. Um, literally, there's no circumstance where you shouldn't just wait another turn. <laughs> just wait another turn. There's no permutation that I can have that allows me to play the Asusa, right? So at that point, what you're, what you're always supposed to do is you're supposed to wait until you mill a primeval titan, which, you know, my opponent has a bunch of mill pieces, so obviously they're going to eventually mill a primeval titan, and then you surgical the prime titan. Like, there's literally no reason to, to do that. Unless they have, like, multiple surgicals or something. But the fact that my opponent went for visions there means that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, well, I, I mean, I can't win this, right? So I'm just going to concede here. Uh, the tech... Sigarda Heron's Grace, the tech. Um, I probably want prismatic ending. I'm gonna have access to the blast zone. Don't like that, don't like that, don't like this. Don't like Foundation Breaker. I think I want Chalice, and I don't think I want Emrakul. But I think I want this, I'm gonna submit 64. I'm a little bit hesitant about engineered explosives, but we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with it. Okay, well, we have the endurance, so we're gonna keep this hand. We have the endurance and the card to pitch to it. So this is what we call a snap keep. Almost regardless of what the rest of the hand looks like. Ruin crab, okay. So many crabs, so little time. And now we just have to find a green source, preferably a bounce land. <clears throat> and this is when we see the test, right? The test as to whether my opponent is a good mill player or a bad mill player. If they're, the good mill players will start to they will chill on the mill until they have an answer to the endurance. Or, uh, like, a, they, they would have brought in Soul Guide Lantern, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Water Grave. Let's see what they, see what they got. They did shock with the Water Grave, which is somewhat surprising. Opponent's paying cost, and they surgical another irrelevant card. Dude, it's kind of crazy. Like, there should be some kind of rules 
that prevent people from just firing surgical willy-nilly. <laughs> there should, there, something needs to be done. Something needs to be done about this. Uh, the awkward part is that I actually really need this surgical to be in my, I mean, uh, am I supposed to endurance here? I think no is the answer. I think I'm not supposed to endurance here. I'm gonna get punished by that. I, I know for a fact that I'm gonna get punished by that, but I still think that it's correct for me to not to endurance in the face of this surgical extraction. Because I don't really need the balance land, right? Also, for the record, my opponent should not exile the growth chamber that's in my graveyard. That gets, that gets them one closer to enabling their ancestral recall. So a little bit of a misstep on their side. Told ya. <laughs> Told ya. Clearly should never surgical. And now the question is, do I want to play Stacy? I think I don't want to play Stacy, actually. I think we're just going to chill here. And I don't want to play out the Sanctuary because um, I don't want to expose it to Field of Ruin. There's an argument for playing the Stacy there, but with my opponent having shocked that Water Grave makes me think that they probably have Fatal Push or something. If they have second Surgical, now they know that they actually have to get the, the Sanctuary. But yeah, this is a very bad Field of Ruin, which doesn't achieve anything at all. <laughs> It just makes it's just better for me <laughs> that they that they did that because now it means that I don't need to play around uh, anything really. So I can pack for a Susa and tighten my opponent here. Seems good to me. Um, then after I have resolved the Titan, there's no Asusas in my graveyard. There's actual no Asusas in my graveyard. All right, they could surgical now. Editions of Beyond. Is this bait? I think I'm not gonna take it. You, you, you may ancestral. Asusa, cast Asusa, play land. I'm just gonna play Sanctuary three times. And now we can, now we get a choice, right? Now we get a choice whether we want to, I'm gonna resolve this Primeval Titan, but I think with the trigger on the stack, I'm gonna Endurance myself. And we want to make sure that we stack the triggers properly. We want to make sure that we that the endurance goes to the graveyard before. Yeah, so we want to put down the stack. So now the endurance is going to shuffle itself back in the deck. Water's garrison. Slayer's stronghold. We're going to haste. We don't get to double strike, but we're going to be pretty far ahead. And I don't think my opponent can mill 49 cards. So good stuff. All right, game number three. Mm, changes, changes, changes. I think this looks good to me. There's an argument for Embercool, the Promised Hand. But that's really the only thing. I don't, I don't care about anything else, really. So I think I'm just going to submit. All right. Sand is obviously fantastic, so we're going to keep it. Turn one crab again. Yep. So we're going to go with the turn one Stacy over the turn one amulet. Sure, if the Stacy dies, then we're not gonna get too much value, but I think that it's like it's it's such upside to have access to Stacy against the Field of Ruin deck. Again, Otawara hitting play probably means that we're oh no. My opponent is gonna surgical my amulet. I, I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel the surgical extraction on my amulet right now. It's totally gonna happen. Oh my god. <laughs> Every single time, man. Every single time. <laughs> I just knew it. When I saw my opponent stopping there for half a second, I'm like, yep, it's happening. <laughs> uh, that's brutal, man. So, I think I wanna play the Teleria West. Because what I could do is I could cast Azusa and then play Sanctuary, but my opponent 100% has the field, right? There's no way and they no way ever that they don't have the field. So, just going to be responsible here. You get to draw a card. Well, I mean, Soul Guide Lantern. Okay, my opponent has learned. My opponent has learned. Okay, that's, uh, that's much better sideboarding. Uh, they exile my Saga, which is the opposite of what they should do <laughs> okay so now we're gonna put in the sanctuary bounce boseju untap and we're just gonna 
I think I'm just gonna play Sigarda. The other option would be to uh, play Explosives for one. But with as many cards as I have in my graveyard right now, Cigar that kind of probably gives me a ton of value. And sure, Field of Ruin. So the Hedron Carp cannot target me anymore. <clears throat> so their auto, auto yield doesn't work any longer. Now the question is, do I play EE for one and blow it up? And I think that the answer is that I do. Cultivator is interesting. So I'm gonna play Boseiju, that's the easy part. And I think that I want to exile my Primeval Titan. Ooh, this is part of the cost, so my opponent can't respond surgical that. That's kind of sick. All right, um, so now I'm going to engineer the explosives, and we're going to crack it. Take four. So now if my opponent wants to field me, that's good. <laughs> I accept that. You can field me away. Surgical my Azusa, you got it, friend. <laughs> you got it, friend. I don't care whatsoever. <laughs> don't care whatsoever. I guess it milled me for two. Oh no, my bounce land. I mean, if they have Archive Trap here, that's a little bit of a problem. So, I guess I'm not gonna play around Surgical here. So we're just gonna... Exile my sanctuary because this this is a two turn clock here, right? One man away from prime time. Extirpate my Stacy. Oh my god. <laughs> is this really happening right now? <laughs> um, okay. Six, yeah. I'm gonna keep sex on the card in my graveyard. Like, it's actively bad for them to exile the card in my graveyard because of both visions of Beyond and there's they also have the three mana instant that exiles all my creatures, right? So that there's multiple reasons for my, for my opponent to not exile the card in my graveyard, but they just keep doing it, which is weird. So I'm gonna make two more tokens here. Float mana. They didn't have Archive Trap last turn. Hopefully they don't have it here. They could have Drown in the Lock though. They do have Drown in the Lock. Two mana and exile the Gracer, of course. And then two mana and exile, what? Explore is the only four off out of the cards in my graveyard, so. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Oh my God, I was one card off of saving the Sigarda. Brutal. All right, here's the saga. And you're gonna take four. Is this good enough? <laughs> oh my God. I'm just, I'm just beating mill like, like that. Shout out to Sigarda, her Heron's Grace. Come on. Shout out to Sigarda. Great, great display from, from the legendary creature Angel. See you next round. Amulet Dominance continues. We have a map, so any land off the top turns this hand into fantastic, but I'm not that greedy. Am I? No, I'm not. Better hand. Certainly a better hand. Gonna keep it and... We're keeping both of these. So it's between these and these. So I'm gonna bottom harvest because Steering is more likely to find me a bounce land. All right, opponent down to six. Turn one Saga, go. What did Foothills fetch? What are you up to over there, OP? Stomping ground, oh, don't tell me that you're gonna play an Arbor Elf. Grazer, Roving Trion? Huh, what is this? Well, I'm just gonna play second Saga and say go. I imagine this is Tameshi. This has to be Tameshi, right? Balakut. Oh, uh, okay, so this is just Bring to Light Scape Shift. That's probably worse for me than if this were Tameshi. No, it has to be better for me. Tameshi is just kind of miserable for us. So we could go for Amulet or we could go for Map. I think I want to go for Map here because I can crack it for a Bounce Land. And I'm protecting my amulet for from um, what's his name? Protecting my amulet from prismatic ending, and I can find the app the amulet off of this saga. So here's my growth chamber. Play crossroads Seiko. Now next turn I'm gonna find amulet off of the saga, and then we're gonna do stuff from there. When it has effects on my end step, Boseju. Okay, let's get burning pool tapped. It's a little bit of a beating. Just a little bit of a beating. 
Um, if I had had any other green source, I would have gone for Amulet instead. Um, so we kind of got punished for that, but Celavi. Genetic explosives, that's literally nothing. Another Saga? Okay, we're doing that. Really hoping for no Ren and Six here. I'm not holding my breath for this Saga or whatever. Ah, look at that. John the Triumph. Fetch land. We're gonna see a BTL for Valky. Looks like no. Mm, that's hot. That's very hot. So we can go play Amulet, play Bounce. Close mana, play Azusa, play Bounce land. Removal? No removal. Okay. Bounce. Play Bounce land again. Still no removal. T West for Pact. Here we go. And now my opponent can prismatic ending my amulet, but even if they do, I have another Asusa next turn, so I don't really care too much. They didn't have removal for the Asusa, so that's good for me, potentially. I guess they could have remand or something. If they have remand or something, we could be in trouble. Yep, there's the ending. Been playing around that all game, so feels good to, <laughs> to see that they, they did actually have it. You're gonna kill my Asusa opponent. Or are you not going to? They are gonna kill my Asusa. All right, doesn't really matter. So float mana, find amulet, play my land, float, play Asusa, play bounce, float, bounce, play bounce again, float mana again. I think I want to bounce this. Definitely gonna haste here. Opponents don't have a single tone card in hand. Um, def uh, like they cannot answer prime time with I guess they could have exactly terminate but if they do then that's kind of fine um, I'm gonna bounce Boros we're gonna attack and I'm gonna Vesuva on my crossroads um, Vesuva Og because of Ren and Six like I don't care about having access to extra I think this is fine because I, I have Already enough mana to cast another Titan if I need to, even if my opponent blows up my amulet. So I think this is fine. But that makes it so Ren and Six is just a really bad draw. I'm supposed to be in an okay one because they can get back Poseidon. I, I don't think anything matters at this point. I don't think my opponent can have a one card that wins in the game. Like Dryad into Fetchland is the best thing that they can do. And I don't think that's going to be good enough. <laughs> All right. Prismatic ending resolves. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Um, Sigarda is kind of cute. Okay. Sigarda prevents my opponent from killing me. Like, as long as there's a Sigarda play, my opponent needs to kill a Sigarda before they can actually combo me out. Emrakul seems interesting as a way to go over the top. I think Emrakul is better than Cultivator. I don't think I care about force foundation breaker maybe to kill dryad this card sucks so get that out of there needle potentially as an answer to debolt because i kind of want to cut stasis on the draw like none of my options are particularly great but i really want to cut stasis on the draw all right what do we got here pretty decent draw actually yeah i'm gonna keep this um so Unfortunately, not a turn three Titan because my bounce land is a garrison as opposed to any other green bounce land. But I think still a keep. I think I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna move to six. I think I'm gonna chill on playing the amulet. Um, does that make me want to play this over Sack? I think it does actually. Let's go Steerings into Sanctuary. Yeah, okay. Steering into Sanctuary is pretty reasonable. So next turn I can go Saga. I'm gonna try to not expose both Amulet and Saga at the same time. So opponent fetches for Triumph, and I guess if they do, if they go Ren and Six, I can go Amulet into Prismatic Ending, which is pretty sexy. Play Valakut, it's a little bit awkward for them. Gracer. So I imagine that was their top deck. Asusa would be sick. All right. We're gonna play Saga and say go. Next turn we're gonna go Amulet into Bounce Land Asusa. And if my opponent has force, they have force, which would be probably not great for me, but it's also not the end of the world. They do have Ren. Oh Valky. 
Well, we can actually just kill that, which is hilarious. Just kill that off of the prismatic ending. Because I kind of want to kill the Azusa, right? <laughs> I don't want my opponent to have access to an Azusa. <laughs> it's actively good against me. It's actually good in their deck, I mean. Which is really funny. Okay. Yeah, I think we're doing that. So, I think we're going to go... I really don't want to play into force. But if I shock here... Oh, man, this is between a rock and a hard place. Like, if I shock, I actually go to 18, which is the key number for my opponent to kill me with Valakut out of nowhere. So I think I think I'm just gonna have to risk it. Like this is exposes me to force, but I guess uh, drawing the other saga sort of undoes that a little bit in terms of I'm still gonna have access to Amulet later. Opponent doesn't know about this card. They also miss their land drop last turn. Oh never mind, no they didn't. They played this. So if my opponent had Force here, they just hard cast it and I get super blown out. But at the same time, I have Azusa, so I just rebuild very quickly, which is very nice. It's not bad at all. So even the worst case scenario is not that bad. And I'm still sitting at 20, which makes it very nice for um, not dying to Valkyrie. I don't know where. Basic planes. Oh. Well, you're, you're pretty dead now, opponent. I'll do that. A little bigger. Play that. The first line is basically free. Play Asusa. And now we just play this, see what my opponent does. They're just F6. Alright. So we're gonna get to prime time. Boomia. Besuga. Stronghold. We already have a summoner's pact in hand, so I feel pretty safe doing this. Zwing. Definitely getting um crossroads. And what's the other thing? Bojugabog again? Um, they're missing land drops, so I really don't want to get Boseju. Yeah, I think this is fine. And at this point, it kind of doesn't really matter what I do. But yeah, there's an argument for getting Boseju there. There's an argument for getting, uh, like, Boseju Bounce Land, for example, would be an interesting thing. So I can't, like, Dryad doesn't do anything. Uh, but then I'm ramping my opponent, which I'm not particularly excited about doing. So... They can Wrath here, I don't care, I just cast another Titan. The Fairy Time Raveler? Yeah, that's not gonna do it, pal. <laughs> I wonder why is that still in their deck? This card is really bad against me. Very bad. This would be, like, if I were if I were my opponent, I were Cyber than this, it would be literally the first thing that I cut. Just cut all of the copies that you're playing. Bouncing Prime Time. Sounds good. And we're passing the turn. <laughs> okay. I like it, opponent. Faith is the last thing that we lose, or like, whatever. I think there's a saying that goes like that, or... Um, I don't know if it really applies here, but... Uh, well, I mean, you know about this guy, so... <laughs> I don't know what, you, what you're expecting. Like, maybe my opponent will forget that they have this card in their hand. I did not forget. Um, let's get Gruul Turf and... I guess Besage Again, this is just... Garbage time, haste prime time, and we even get to, wow, we even get to, to kill the fairy for value. Whew, that's hot. Yeah, that one. Double strike that one. Oh, you dead the fairy. 3-0, see you next round. All right, what do we got here? Um, this one's a trap, actually. This is already a mulligan. We can do better. <laughs> um, this one's not better, so we'll go to five. This one's also not better. Go to four. Somehow still not better. Uh, but this one has a plan at least. So we cut that. We can keep four. So we're going to keep one, two, three, four. Explore the Azusa. Keep these four cards. All right. Turn one Vesuva. Go. And the reason to keep the Vesuva here, obviously, it's because we can go um, bounce land on turn two, and then on turn three, we can actually um, bounce the Vesuva itself. Then on three, if we find any of the land, we can play something. We, we, we basically have more mana, right, overall. Playing against Hammer, which is not the matchup where you want to be moving to four. Give her eight. Well, so I think I'm going to explore and pay for the tax. And any land, whew, all right. Uh, I mean, we're casting a Titan next turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So this worked out. Am I dead? That's a pure steel paladin. I'm not dead. It would look like I am not dead. So... I mean, I'm gonna have my opponent draw a card, which is really scary, but I don't think I can just... Let's think about this for a second. I guess there's a Sun Home in play, but if I don't let... If I just pass the turn, next turn, Saga pops off, I can go... I can just 20 my opponent. Now I'm gonna Pact here. Yeah, I'm gonna Pact in haste. So I'm gonna say no to this, which sucks, but it is what it is. For me, we'll tighten. And I think that we're gonna do all of this stuff, prime time. And I'm just going to garrison, stronghold to haste. And then I'm gonna get Bojuke Ball in Boseju plus a bounce land. <laughs> what do I bounce? I think I bounce the garrison. Because I'm gonna probably need this next turn. So attack, we're gonna go Boseju, Sanctuary, Balance Boseju. <laughs> Mool to four? <laughs> Are we gonna get there in a Mool to four? Are we about to just get there in a Mool to four? Is that what's about to happen? Stoneforge Mystic. You got it, Chief. I don't think that's enough. They play the land already. So I'm just gonna kill the hammer. I'm not gonna kill the creature. Uh huh. That draws a card. You can equip it. Thopter has been equipped. <laughs> now what? What's my opponent's game plan here? Like, if they attack, I just kill them. I just take it. I mean, yeah, that's, that's fine. I take 10. You're dead? Sure. So the problem if I blow up the hammer now is that they're gonna have access to one more mana. So next turn, uh, I guess I'm gonna have Devil Amulet. So I play Sun Home, pay for Pact, attack, put in blocks. Yeah, I'm gonna Poseidon you, the hammer, and hope that my opponent doesn't have another one. I mean, they didn't have previously because it would have been much better for my opponent to like attack first and then see what I do. So I don't think they already have another hammer, but they may have drawn it off of their draw step. So what are we doing here? Definitely getting another amulet and then we can place Sun Home. So I guess I'm just gonna make the mana. Get another amulet, play expedition map, and I'm gonna pay for the tax. Play Sun Home, swing, say yes. And I guess we can go Odawara Gruel Turf. If I go Odawara Gruel Turf, Odawara taps for itself. I get to double strike Titan. I bounce the Odawara. Hmm. I guess I can only bounce the Giver if I do that. So I guess I am indeed dead to, to another hammer. But I don't think there's anything I can, I can do about it. So I'm just gonna get Gruel Turf and T West instead. So if Rebellion does have another hammer, we're probably going to lose, I think. But the way things worked out, I don't think there was any way for me to play around it. Maybe I should have balanced the Pure Steel Paladin, but they might want to give us, so. So now they take eight, they go down to one, because protection versus double strike works in such a way, which is very weird. Um, and now we pass the turn. So we're dead to a hammer, which my opponent doesn't have, so they need to exactly top deck the hammer or another Stoneforge. Pure Steel Paladin doesn't do it, because I'm just gonna transmute for EE and blow everything up. Opponent's making mana, that's scary. Oh, wow! Sword of Fire and Ice, I'm gonna die to Sword of Fire and Ice. Was there a way for me to play around this? I don't think so. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we, we die if my opponent swings everything. That's pretty funny. Yep. <laughs> All right, um, yeah. It's, it's weird, but I don't think there was any way for me to, to play around that. We do, that was a multi four. We almost got there on the multi four, but no such luck. So this is good, this is good, this is good. Jukebox gonna go, Colossus is gonna go. Stacy looks really good here. Hmm. How do we wanna set up the deck? I think Steering is better than Harvest. And I'm gonna be cutting some amount of cantrips, I think. Maybe one Azusa on the play. 
So I'm gonna try to play longer game. So my prismatic ending I don't need. Yeah, this looks good. I definitely want to keep the green card count up because of my forces. So yeah, let's try this out. All right. Um, hmm. Very interesting hand. I think I like it. Keep it. How do we work with it though? I think work. I'm gonna turn one saga. I think I'm gonna turn one saga. And I'm gonna save the T West so I can transmute. Like this is my primeval titan. I can go T West into the Gracer with any green source. And that's gonna allow me to that's gonna allow me to find my primeval titan. Put almost to five, by the way. It's not bad. Here's my Kabira crossroads, and it's your turn. So I guess I I guess, I'm thinking that last game I guess I should have gotten crossroads off of the trigger. <laughs> Um, obviously, like it makes sense now, right? At the time, I don't think that that was the play. Okay, we've got a hammer. Mm, you know what's better than a hammer opponent? <laughs> you know what's better than a hammer opponent? 20 damage is better than a hammer. <laughs> 20 damage is sometimes better than a hammer. I will not pay 11, thank you. Garrison Stronghold. If my opponent's got Solitude, good for them. I'm not gonna play around Solitude. Yes, the Suva Sun Home. 20. Sweet. Alright. Um good mulligans from both of us actually. I had a good mul to four game one. My opponent had a pretty solid mul to five game two. Um on the draw. Anything that I want to change? Not really. Maybe ending. I don't know, like sorcery speed is just so awkward. I think I'm just gonna submit here. Ugh. If this hand had a ramp, I would probably keep it because Blast Zone is just kind of the nuts against them. But I'm gonna go to six here. Really good hand. Keep it. Um, I think I bought um Isuva. Because T West gives me some options in terms of what to do. Oof, I almost played the amulet. No, I definitely want to lead on Stacy. Most definitely lead on Stacy. Any land would be a great draw here. Drum. That's any land. Um, so I guess I'm gonna play the amulet into the spell pierce that my opponent probably has. Ooh, they don't have spell pierce. Okay. Okay. Second saga. I'm starting to feel like my opponent and I may be playing different games right now. My opponent's trying to play the grind the grindy game. And I'm that's not the game that I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing the game of you're dead. Playing the game of you are dead, my friend. Temple Garden, play this, activate Stacy. Shout out to Stacy for being a gal. I was here. Yes. Garrison. Stronghold. Shout out to Stacy. Jeez. Swing. And I think we're gonna go Growth Chamber Boseju here. And we're gonna hold up Boseju. The other option is to go. Huh. This is quite interesting, actually. So, the other option is to go Engineered Explosives, nothing go. But I think I'm gonna go with Boseju. This forces my opponent to Peeling Needle the Boseju, and then I just blow everything up. So my opponent's gonna make a token here, which is fine. They can't use the mana. So if they do have a hammer, I mean, they can't flash in the thing, so. Opponent floats the mana. I could have killed the Construct in response. Oh, wait, what? Oh, they have the thing that makes the artifact indestructible? Is that what's up? I guess they could have that, huh? The plus two plus two something skill, they could have that. That would make the game very interesting, actually. Like, what do I target with the Boseju? I would probably still target the Construct. If my opponent has also Shadow Spear as well, that's worse for me, but... Reality Chip, okay. That's very cool, actually. That's actually super. <laughs> That's really, really cool. My opponent just did there. Um, they did not have to do anything, but it was really cool that they did it. <laughs> like in response to it becoming an equipment, you just float a mana off the off the spring drum. That's really hot. It's really, really hot. Mm, okay. I don't think they have enough mana to just go off here. So unless they have an answer to the prime time, I think we're good to go. Gibber. Move this stuff over there. Okay, so they have no mana floating, so just dead. Got him! Mm, I guess I'm gonna blow up my own amulet, so... 
Rikin Odawara, that's hilarious. Um, I'm gonna pack them and crack this. Oh, I should have done that on combat. Whoops. Uh oh. Wow, that was a really bad play. <laughs> I'm I'm actually in trouble now. Um, I managed to find a way to throw the game away. So I guess I'm gonna have to pack for Foundation Breaker. <laughs> Whoops. So let's get. <laughs> All right, I, I deserve to lose this one. <laughs> well, so I had to do this in attack, so I can I could have double strike the Titan, but <laughs> I'm just I'm a little too strong. I'm just trying to give my opponent chances to to win the game. Um, so I'm gonna have to pact for what's for Foundation Breaker and blow this up, I think, and then Paladin is not gonna have what's his name. Is not gonna have the the thing. Metalcraft. So let's go blast zone and let's go I guess a green source. Yeah, I totally forgot the fact that it was gonna blow up my own my own amulet. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. So foundation breaker cast. Blow that up. So if they make a token, they are not gonna have metalcraft. But now I potentially put myself in, in bad shape. I'm just gonna pay for Pact otherwise. Pay for Pact. One, two, three, four, transmute. I think we should be in good shape anyway. I definitely made things a lot harder than, than they needed to be. Made things a lot harder than, than, they, than they needed to be, but I think I'm still gonna be okay. Lock. If they move stuff, then their thing dies. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, they didn't do it. Good job, opponent. <clears throat> okay, so. One, two, three. Oh, we just cracked Blast Zone. Four, pay for Pact. Load mana. Um, one, two, three. Sack this. Get an amulet. Swing for lethal. All right, sweet, got there. Ferno. All right, can we get the 5 with optimal amulet? Not with this hand. This one's hot though. This one's real hot. So I think we're gonna ship Tolerate West. We do get kind of punished um we do get kind of punished if we if my opponent has thoughtsies or something but i can only play around so much stuff basic forest explore stacy activate Whew. look at this draw just going off here just going off i'm playing against murktai what am i playing against metamorphose wait is this storm oh this is prowess Stormwing Entity? Yeah. Wow, I have not played against this deck in a really long time. Yeah, I heard that this deck is now the hotness. Uh, can I please find a land? Bounce land? Ugh. All right, so we lose. <sighs> Remember Lava Dart? Remember Lava Dart? Turns out it's probably still good. <laughs> Lightning Bolt. All right. Bolting phase. Sadness. That would have been a sick bluff, right? If I don't play my bounce land and I just instead bounce land into prime time. Five drop. Ugh. <laughs> I'm not gonna attack though, because I think it's worth like the 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 points of damage that I'm the two points of damage I'm gonna deal don't matter. And my opponent could have like a monastery sweet spear or something on Lava Dart and, or like a way to kill my Asusa and then I'm gonna wish that I had access to. Wait, land then express iteration? Okay. I guess my opponent's like, yeah, I'm gonna find two spells of this iteration and you're so bad. <laughs> my opponent's just gonna get me. You are just dead. Literally doesn't matter what I do here. You're just fucking dead. Don't even play the Swift Spear because they up the bolt. Yeah, can't can't block you. <laughs> yeah, this matchup has always been horrendous. Uh, Stacy's out. Path. I do like Thrag Daddy. Seems okay. Ending seems medium. Colossus sucks. Foundation Breaker probably a necessary evil. Um, Blast Zone over Bog. Do I want to card them? This seems like it's gonna chump block the Prisma and the Entity more often than not. Ooh, Chalice is sick though. Got some harvests. All right, what do we got? Um, man. His hands are just not doing it, huh? 
even though we found the one of Grazer, but like we just don't have a route towards Titan, so ship it. So it's the best hand we've seen so far. Keep this one. Uh, shock here, don't love the shock there, but it is what it is. Soul Scar, that's brutal, man. It's totally brutal. Uh, bounce here, explore, land, okay. Now we're going to get a basic and explore again. All right, all right. Well, that's a, that's a game plan right there, which is not die this turn, win next one. Kind of, we enacted the game plan. Is it a good game plan? Please. Oh yeah, it's a good game plan. All right, love me some good game plans. Uh, my opponent is gonna be able to trigger Ledger Shredder this turn. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. Opponent, you are triggering Ledger Shredder this turn. The Shredder is gonna shred. Yep. Connive away. <laughs> Connive away, my friend. <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right. For the glory, for the glory of the 5 and 0, any changes? I don't think so. I don't think so. Does Shredder want to... Does Shredder make me want this, maybe? Like the second explosives on the draw? Probably not. The explosive is a little bit of a slow answer anyways. Yeah, I think we're just going to submit. Cross fingers and submit. Ugh. This hand is robust, but this hand is hella slow. I think I'm shipping it. On the draw against Prowess, I just don't think that hand's going to be good enough. This one's better. And I think I'm going to send the Ancients. And if my opponent has Blood Moon, we're probably going to lose. But if they don't, though, let me tell you. Let me tell you if my opponent doesn't have Blood Moon. Spell Pierce. Okay. That's kind of what I want my opponent to be doing, though. I want them to be doing, like, this silly value game, right? Play the land, say go. Please don't Blood Moon me. Pretty please. And they're going to have the mana that they need because of this monkey. Ooh. Now maybe not. Put in place, fetch, get snow covered island, sprite dragon. I may be able to get away with murder here. Um explore. Well that's a good thing, so. Boseiju who endures. So float mana. Definitely gonna get amulet here, obviously. Now the question is how do we follow up? And I think I'm gonna play around my Esusa dying, so I'm just gonna go. Bounce land, float, blast zone, play Azusa with blue floating. And we're going to do, I guess I kind of want to kill this thing, but I can't. I just have to play both of both of these and hope that I don't get Blood Mooned. So I can't beat Blood Moon, can't beat a bunch of things. Like I can't beat, I don't think they're going to have enough to kill me with Sprite Dragon this turn. Famous last words. So that's going to be a ton of damage now, because they're just going to flash back with their one mountain. And that's going to be six, seven, eight. If they have Bolt, I lose? Oh, that's so much better than Bolt. <laughs> All right, never mind, I'm dead. Um, yeah, I mean, I could have Prismatic Ending this Pride Dragon, but the problem if I Prismatic Ending is that I'm not going to have enough mana to Titan on the following turn. Like, the only way that I can guarantee that I cast the Titan next turn is if I do this this turn. So my opponent would need to really whiff up this iteration. And Swift Spear? That doesn't kill me. 4, 8, 11 down to 3? Just getting slow rolled here. Yep, just getting slow rolled. All right. Um, very unfortunate. I was looking forward to, to getting this glorious list published, but Prowess, just like it was back in the day, is going to prevent me from 5-0 in 2022. C'est la vie. Oh, man. I can't believe I almost 5-0 with this garbage! This list is absolute trash, but it really goes ahead and it really showcases how busted Amulet can be <laughs> if you get lucky enough. Oh, oh my god, this list is so bad, like, <laughs> all of the white cyber cards with, like, definitely not enough white co white sources, like, the, the card trace, like, Dryad is messed up, man, like, imagine if I had Dryad in that, in that last matchup instead of Asusa, right, like, I would have been able to, to survive the turn, set up the Titan for the following turn, um, Odawara, <laughs> 
I can't believe these greed monsters playing Otawara. Like, not only that, they're playing, like, Bo Bojuku Bog. Like, what are these cantrips? The, the cantrips were kind of bad. <laughs> they were so bad. Um, yeah, don't try this at home. <laughs> you would need to be really lucky like I just got in order to get a positive record. This list is trash. This is actually a meme. Uh, thank you, Cameron, for your continued support. Hopefully you enjoy this league. Uh, but this is a meme that just went too well and i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why my my uh i don't know i just got so lucky all the time throughout the entire league um but yeah anybody can 5-0 with any pile of trash it really it really showcased that uh but yeah don't play this list it's really really bad like these are bad cards like don't play prismatic ending in your amulet deck don't play path to exile or thrug does dude like Sigarda, Heron's Grace. Oh, these cards are just so bad. <laughs> just play more copies of the good cards. I recommend that. Hopefully you enjoy this meme league. Um, somehow ended up almost getting the trophy, but um, I guess that life is indeed fair and I was not able to get there. But hopefully you enjoy the content anyway. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in some coaching or if you want me to play any pile of trash uh, for you on stream or making any video like this one, uh, you can find all the information you need in the description below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.